Today, I'm going to show you how to add text to anything in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. I'm excited about today's episode because we get to show you some really cool tools that you may not have used before in Photoshop. We are gonna be adding text to a building and I'm gonna show you some really cool layer effects that you can use to make the actually text look like it's in the building instead of just like floating in the general place of the building. But the coolest part of this tutorial is I'm gonna show you how to use a filter called Vanishing Point that's gonna automatically warp your text to make it look like it's in the exact same perspective as the building. This is super cool, you don't wanna miss this episode. So here's our image from today. I went ahead and cleaned it up a little bit to get us a nice blank slate right here. Before it said Congress, but I just used the content to wear a fill tool to get rid of it. So what we're doing is basically I want something that's going to fill this area in. So you could use a logo here. You could use a, you know something like your, your own company logo. And don't think of it as you can only put this on a building. You could put this, think about like if you took a picture of a sign, anything that's like a, basically a flat surface in any different perspective. So let's go ahead and figure out what we're gonna put on this building. I'm gonna hit T for my type tool, and we're just gonna click right over here, and I'm gonna type in the United States of Flern. You guys know, United States of Flern. Totally a normal thing to put on a building. All right, so the United States of Flern. Now, I want this to look like it's actually on the building, and you might think like, well, why don't you just like put it there and you know, like make it a little smaller and rotate it and stuff like that. And that's not a horrible idea, but getting it to actually look like it's on there, like you can see the perspective doesn't really work here. And th there's quite a bit to figure out. So I want something that's a little bit more automated, a little bit something that I can trust more of the time. And that's where this new filter comes in that I'm about to show you. So the first thing we need to do to use the filter, the vanishing point filter, is we need to get something like ready to place into the vanishing point filter. So this is what this text is. It's ready to go and I need to copy it. It needs to be on my clipboard, okay? So whatever you're using, whether it's gonna be a logo or a person's face, you know, a text, whatever it is, it needs to be on the clipboard. So to get something on the clipboard, the clipboard is just where like when you do copy and paste, that's just where that's stored. So I'm gonna hold control or command and we're gonna click here on the thumbnail of the layer. And that's just gonna turn the layer into a thumbnail, sorry, into a selection. So you can see it's a selection there. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control C, and that's just gonna copy that onto the clipboard. All right, let's go ahead and make that invisible. I can make a new layer, and I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect. All right, so we've got, basically, we've got this on the clipboard, I don't see it anymore, and we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna go to Filter, and then down here to Vanishing Point. So basically what we see here is just our background image. And now what I need to do is figure out how to get that text onto this dialog. Well, earlier we used Command-C or Control-C to copy our text onto the clipboard. So now all I have to do is I need to create or define my shape that's actually, I want the text to be in, and then I just need to paste it in. So let's go ahead and define that shape real quick. All right, we're gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna click here on this tool. This is our Create Plane tool. So let's just zoom in and I'm gonna click on each of the corners that we want. So if this is a, a sign or whatever it is, you can just click on each of the corners. So we're zoomed in and I'm just using spacebar to scroll around. So like click there and then spacebar is just gonna allow me to scroll around. And there we go. So that just kind of defines the actual plane that we're going to be pasting our text image into. And you can move these things after the fact if you kind of messed up, not a big deal. All right, so we've got that basically well-defined. So Photoshop is now gonna know, like if we paste something into this image, it's gonna stick it on that perspective plane. So I'm gonna hit Command V, and that's going to paste the selection right in there. So we've got United States of Learn. Now if I click and drag this down into here, check that out. It automatically shows up in the correct perspective, which is amazing. Now we need to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna hit Command T, and we're gonna just scale this a little bit. So let's hold down Shift, and just scale this down just a bit. And there we go, let's go a little bit more. We wanna make sure this fits really nicely in that space. Let's go down a little bit smaller in size. There we go. And we're just gonna zoom in a couple times just to make sure that that's the right area. And you can see like the N from the Flurn ends in the same perspective as this line here and the U 
as well. So it's in the exact per perfect perspective. This is the whole idea behind this tool. Now, and you can use this for basically anything that's a flat plane in any bit of perspective that you can imagine. All right, so that looks really great. Let's just hit OK. There we go. And it's on that new layer in the right perspective. So you don't have to worry about actually doing that yourself manually. It just puts it there in the right perspective for you. So now we're going to play around with our layer effects and make sure this actually looks like it's carved into the stone. So to get to our layer effects, we're just going to double click right here on our layer. And this is going to bring up our layer style. Now, I can't see just everything here. So I'm just going to kind of move things around to get a little bit of better view. All right, there we go. So we have a lot of options here, things like bevel emboss and gradient overlay and drop shadows and things like that. And depending on how you actually want your text to look, like if you want your text to look like it's sticking out or pushed in, you're going to change these options. So I would really recommend getting in here and just kind of just playing around. Um, but we're going to use, we're going to start off with a bevel and emboss. So let's go ahead and click on our bevel and emboss. You can do things like changing, change the depth of the bevel and emboss. You can have this be an up or a down, and you can just kind of see it's going to change basically depending on every one of your options that you choose. All right, now I'm going to choose an inner bevel, and I'm going to choose this to be a chisel hard. Now you can change any of these options. Again, it's, these are going to change depending on what you actually want this to look like, right? Like what, <laughs> what you want your end result to be. All right, there we go. So that's our chisel hard. Now all these things you can totally change. Like your depth is basically going to change. We've got a little bit of texture going on here because I chose chisel hard. We can change this as well. So you can make this less deep or more deep. Let's go ahead and put it somewhere right around there. All right. And you can change your size as well. This is basically like, again, affecting how much it's going to actually change the, uh, change the properties of your layer. OK, so that's actually look, looking pretty good. It's looking like it's in there. Now, I want to do that a little bit more. I want to make it look a little bit deeper. So I'm going to click on this inner shadow. All right, so my inner shadow, you can see it's relatively subtle. Let's just zoom in there so we can turn this off and on. All right, now the one thing you want to make sure when you're doing these layer effects, make sure you always have this use global light checked. Because if you don't have that checked, it's just going to try to like calculate a different light source for each of these, and they're not going to look consistent. So make sure you have that checked. All right, now we can change things like our opacity if we want to bring that down or up. It's just going to make the shadow either darker or uh, less dark. <laughs> we can change our distance, which is going to make it look like it's a little deeper. Let's see, something right about there. Looks pretty good. All right, and size and things like that. So this is one of those things where you're just going to have to get in there and change all these settings as you go along. You're probably not going to just click all your settings and have it look perfect your first go round. All right, so bevel and emboss, inner shadow looks great. And then, you know what, I want to add some color. Right now it doesn't, it looks okay, but the color doesn't look like it really matches the building. So I'm going to click on this color overlay. And we've got a red color now. It makes a lot more sense to have color that actually would be in the building. So we're going to click right here. And I'm just going to go over to this color here. And we're just going to click right here. So this is going to give it a little bit more of a brown color. There we go. That looks pretty good. A little bit more of a brown color that's actually in our building. And then we can choose how visible we want this to be, either less or more visible. All right, let's just zoom out and see. You can see it kind of renders weird if you zoom out. So we're just going to keep it right there. And uh, that looks pretty good. Let's hit OK and see what this looks like on our building. It looks pretty good. There are a couple things that I want to change to this. Um, I want to make it look like it's kind of been there for a little while. Like right now, it, it looks good, but it looks like it's, it's fresh, right? There's no like signs of age on the building. And the other thing is that it looks too sharp. Like based on the you know, resolution of the actual image itself, right? it looks too sharp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a blur. So we're going to go ahead and close this down. I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. So Command-J to duplicate that layer. And then I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to shift click the two of those and merge them together. So a command E to merge those together. What that does is basically strips you of your layer effects. So now I've got this copy here. And you can see there are no layer effects on this layer. So let's go ahead and give this a little bit of a blur. So I'm going to go to Filter, and then down here to Blur, and to Gaussian Blur. All right. And let's just choose something. I don't want to go too high on this or It's going to start to look fake. But even something like a. 0.5 radius, 
There we go. That looks pretty good at a 0.7 pixels. So let's hit OK. I'm going to zoom in and we can show you the before and the after. There we go. So here's the before. Just looks too clear. And then the after looks like it's actually part of the building. So the blur looks really good at this point. It looks like it's actually fitting into the building. But I want to give it a little bit of age, make it look like some waters hit this and kind of like brought some of the color down a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer again. I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to go to Filter. We're going to go to Blur. And I'm going to go down here to Motion Blur. All right. And let's just bring this angle down to right about 90 and bring our distance up just a little bit. There we go. Let's bring our angle up a little bit as well. There we go. And that's just kind of see how it kind of like makes it look like it's kind of coming down a little bit there. I'm going to give this a Gaussian blur as well, just to blur our edges just a little bit. All right. There we go. That looks pretty good. So let's put a layer mask on this. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask. And that's going to create a black layer mask. And then I just want to paint white on my layer mask right here underneath my letters. All right. And this is just going to kind of look at like, you know, when rain hits a building over time, it just kind of like erodes. This is going to make it just look a little bit more real. Like this has just kind of been carried down and, you know, over time, it's just like affecting the marble color underneath it. All right. And I'm going to put this underneath my text so it doesn't actually obscure my text. There we go. And we'll just lower our opacity a little bit. So I don't need this effect to like totally take over the image, but it, you can see it's just like it helps to add, you know, just a little bit more realism to it. We just want to make sure we don't have this visible on the tops of our letters, just the bottoms of our letters, because it's supposed to approximate a little bit of, uh, you know, wear and tear erosion. It's an erosion simulator. It's pretty cool. No big deal. All right. There we go. That looks awesome. So that's pretty much it, guys. And get in here and kind of play around with your different layer effects. And depending on your surface, you're going to like whether you want your text to look like it's coming out or being pushed in, or you want to add a little bit of texture or some color and things like that. All those things are available in your layer effects. So let's go ahead and group all those layers together. I'm going to hit Shift, click on them all, and hit Command G. All right. And let's look, take a look at our before and our after. So here's our before. And there's our after. That's it for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to use that vanishing point filter, which is a super cool addition to Photoshop, as well as some layer effects that make it look like this is actually written in the stone. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can receive new videos, updates, all that fun stuff every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode, please leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And if anyone in your life you think might benefit from a little bit of Photoshop knowledge, send them over to flurn.com. We'd appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll flurn you later. Welcome to the United States of Flurn. So the blur looks really, ah. <laughs> the cool thing you can see is it actually inside of the stone. <laughs> Dang it. Whew, I didn't make a single mistake in that. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry to whoever has to edit this.